In the flicker of time's embrace, when celluloid dreams danced upon silver screens, a tale of redemption and relentless pursuit emerged. You Only Live Once, a cinematic relic from the year 1937. As you traverse the corridors of your memories, cast your mind back to that initial encounter with this black and white masterpiece. Perhaps you found yourself entranced by the chiaroscuro visuals, each shadow whispering secrets of the character's tormented souls. Or maybe it was the heart-wrenching narrative that tugged at the strings of your empathy, urging you to reflect on the fragility of existence and the inexorable pull of fate. The crackling of the projector, the soft rustling of popcorn, and the collective intake of breath from the audience. These are the symphonies that accompanied your maiden voyage into the world of You Only Live Once. And oh, the moments that etched themselves indelibly upon your mind. The stolen glances between the star-crossed lovers, the heart-pounding chase scenes that left your pulse racing, and the poignant dialogues that lingered like whispers in the wind. Now, let's delve into the captivating tapestry that weaves together the lesser-known threads of this cinematic gem. Beyond the limelight, did you know that the film's director drew inspiration from real-life events that were both harrowing and hopelessly romantic? And as we peel back the layers, uncover the serendipitous casting choices that breathed life into these iconic characters, forever imprinted on the annals of cinematic history. So, let the celluloid unravel and the secrets reveal themselves, for within these pages, you'll find a curated collection of facts that illuminate the hidden corners of You Only Live Once, a film that defied the ticking of time to resonate with hearts across generations. Fritz Lang's complex journey with You Only Live Once in the year 1937. Fritz Lang's cinematic prowess took an intriguing turn with You Only Live Once. Building on the critical success of his prior American venture, Fury, Lang's trajectory faced uncertainty in Hollywood's capricious landscape. While Lang's politically charged films intrigued critics, Tinseltown's elite remained uncertain. A silver lining emerged from the shadow of doubt in the form of Sylvia Sidney, the leading lady of Fury, who championed Lang's cause. Sidney's endorsement swayed producer Walter Wanger to tap Lang for directing duties on his latest project. Ironically, what started as a promising collaboration led to Lang's vexing reputation. As production unfurled, whispers of Lang's difficult demeanor echoed through the studio corridors. This reputation, whether deserved or not, effectively halted his directorial ventures for a staggering 18 months. Delving into the Fritz Lang papers at USC unveils an enigmatic layer to the narrative. A cast list, adorned with character names, presents a roster that diverges from the final cut. The likes of John Beck, Harry Bernard, Dorothea Walbert, Walter Soderling, Frank Hammond, and Russ Powell, though absent from the released print, evoke curiosity. Did their scenes grace the cutting room floor or were they never captured at all? This enigma is a testament to the ever-evolving nature of cinematic creation, leaving us to ponder the alternate reality that might have been. You Only Live Once, one among a constellation of Walter Wanger, Harry Sherman, Cinema Guild Productions, found its journey traversing cinematic platforms. Originally released by United Artists, it later found itself re-released theatrically by Masterpiece Productions in the 1940s. Ultimately, the film made its way into the homes of Americans via television syndication in 1950. The movie's path was one of adaptability, etching its tale across different screens and cities. Its telecasts, from Chicago to Boston, captured the essence of a nation's evolving appetite for narrative, proving that the passage of time couldn't dim its resonance. As celluloid history unspools, You Only Live Once remains not just a tale of love and fate, but also a testament to the intricacies of creation, collaboration, and the elusive dance between directorial brilliance and the industry's ever-watchful gaze. The 1937 film You Only Live Once may not have made a splash at the box office, but its impact resonates in unexpected corners. A snippet of dialogue from the movie found an unlikely home in the Cure's song Pornography. Around the 69-minute mark, during a gas station robbery scene, the sampled lines create an eerie connection between cinematic tension and musical introspection. This crime drama, starring Sylvia Sidney and Henry Fonda, also bears the mark of an unrecorded song. 
A thousand dreams of you, a tune associated with the film, showcased Sydney and Fonda on its sheet music cover. Yet, despite Fonda recording the song in November 1936, his rendition remained absent from the final cut. Instead, the music, like a hidden heartbeat, likely lingered as background ambience, underscoring the character's struggles. Financial disappointment clouded the film's legacy, recording a loss of $48,045 according to production company records. Despite this fiscal stumble, You Only Live Once Lives on in the obscure corners of pop culture. Its echoes in music and the enigmatic absence of Fonda's voice remind us that even films that miss their mark can leave an indelible mark. In the grand tapestry of cinema history, You Only Live Once weaves an intricate thread, connecting unexpected dots between Hollywood and musical innovation. As we unearth these hidden connections, we unveil a richer understanding of the film's impact far beyond its initial release. 1,937 seconds you only live once, a glimpse into censorship battles and cinematic innovations in the annals of Hollywood history. Fritz Lang's 1937 film You Only Live Once stands as a testament to both creative tenacity and the regulatory challenges of its era. The movie's production was not without its share of conflicts, with a particularly fierce dispute arising over a pivotal robbery scene. Joseph Breen, the vigilant director of the Production Code Administration, took issue with the scene's vivid depiction. His stringent objection read like a detailed list of prescriptions, no flash of a man's face contorted with agony, no showing of a woman lying on the sidewalk, no hurling of bombs, and the list went on. The print submitted to the PCA spanned 100 minutes, but it bore the scars of numerous cuts and alterations. Breen's stern stance eventually led to the film earning the coveted PCA seal of approval, but not before a tug of war over its content. At the heart of the film's innovation was the use of a metal detector, a cinematic novelty in its day. This ingenious device played a pivotal role in the plot when it detected a concealed gun during a prison entry scene. This marked one of the earliest instances of a metal detector being deployed on screen, a precursor to the countless times the trope would be revisited in the decades that followed. Tragedy and serendipity collided with the casting of Charles Sale in the movie. The seasoned actor, whose career had spanned decades, tragically passed away just two months before the film's release in November 1936. His role in You Only Live Once would ultimately be remembered as his cinematic swan song a poignant footnote in the movie's history. As the reels of time turn, You Only Live Once remains a testament to the cinematic clashes of its era. From the clashes with the PCA to the pioneering use of a metal detector, it encapsulates the struggles and innovations that define Hollywood's golden age. In the ever-evolving landscape of cinema, You Only Live Once still whispers tales of controversy, innovation, and the relentless pursuit of artistry. Its legacy serves as a touchstone for both cinephiles and scholars alike, a reminder that even within the strictures of the past, creativity found a way to flourish. In the realm of 1930s cinema, You Only Live Once stands as a remarkable film that intertwines crime and fate. Loosely inspired by the infamous Texan criminals Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker, this gripping narrative follows the tumultuous journey of a wrongfully accused couple. But did you know? Among the film's cast, an uncredited Jack Carson made his cinematic debut, marking the first step in his storied career. As the plot unfolds, Henry Fonda and Sylvia Sidney portray Eddie and Joan, the ill-fated lovers trapped in a world of suspicion and desperation. This harrowing tale of love and crime also laid the groundwork for unexpected connections. Two of the film's actors, Jonathan Hale and Jerome Cowan, would later find themselves in the Blondie series, taking on the role of Dagwood's boss. Hale's portrayal of the irascible Mr. Dithers spanned 16 films, while Cowan assumed the mantle for eight subsequent movies. You Only Live Once, directed by Fritz Lang, is a testament to the era's penchant for blending reality and fiction, leaving an indelible mark on cinematic history. The convergence of talents, the emergence of new stars, and the weaving of interconnected narratives make this film an enduring classic that still resonates with audiences today. So, as the reels of time continue to spin, the echoes of this captivating film remind us that in the face of adversity, love and destiny are inextricably entwined. Eccentric screenwriters and memorable radio broadcast, unveiling quirky aspects of You Only Live Once screenwriters Gene Town 
and C. Graham Baker, renowned for their offbeat style, left an indelible mark on the 1937 film You Only Live Once. Notoriously eccentric, the dynamic duo's work habits were unconventional, often crafting their narratives while clad in bras and bathing suits, a curious display of creative freedom. Adding to their mystique, they penned memos on the unlikeliest of materials, including toilet paper, embracing an idiosyncratic approach that mirrored the essence of the film itself. Amidst the film's enduring legacy, a lesser-known gem emerges, the 30-minute radio adaptation on the Screen Guild Theater. Airing on October 29, 1945, this broadcast reunited Henry Fonda and Sylvia Sidney, the original stars, as they masterfully rekindled their cinematic roles. This auditory reimagining granted the narrative renewed life, capturing the essence of the film's tension-laden love story. In the realm of cinematic debuts, actress Amzie Strickland graced the screen for the first time through You Only Live Once. Embarking on a career that would span decades, Strickland's introduction in this gripping tale laid the foundation for her prolific journey in the world of entertainment. As the years unfurl, You Only Live Once stands as a testament to the unorthodox, inviting us to explore the peculiar work habits of its ingenious creators, and to relive its dramatic resonance through a unique radio experience. This film's quirks are a testament to the boundless diversity of creative expression that continues to shape cinematic history. As the credits roll on this cinematic journey, we are left with a tapestry of emotions woven together by the 1937 classic, You Only Live Once. The flickering light of the silver screen has illuminated the deepest corners of human experience, revealing love's resilience and society's shadows. Each frame invites us to ponder our own choices, aspirations, and the fragile threads that bind us all. As we bid adieu to the characters who became our companions for a brief, but impactful time, we find ourselves at the crossroads of introspection. How often have we chased our dreams with unwavering determination, much like Eddie and Joe? How frequently have we encountered obstacles that questioned our worth, echoing the society's skepticism? This movie's resonance lingers like a cherished memory, reminding us that life's tapestry is both messy and beautiful. We, too, face our share of choices that can either shackle us or set us free. The moments of love and vulnerability, the darkness that tests our spirit, they all find a mirror in this timeless tale. Now, as the curtain falls, I invite you to share your own personal tapestry woven with the threads of You Only Live Once. What resonated most with you? Was it the unbreakable spirit of Eddie? The undying love between him and Joe? Or perhaps the haunting reflection of societal norms that still reverberates today? Your thoughts and memories, like droplets of rain, contribute to the ever-expanding river of human connection. Share your reflections, and let's continue the journey sparked by this remarkable film. Thank you for lending your time and thoughts to this cinematic exploration. Your voice adds another layer to the intricate narrative of life. Warmly, your name.